like your little bubble But you gotta wake up to reality Cause I can see in your eyes Your head is full of dreams Tears are a proof of failure You just gotta let Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Silas and today I'm very excited for this episode of Right Out of the Box, which is my version of a first look slash first impressions of a product, a lens, whatever it may be, without unboxing it because I realized when I first made one, an unboxing video, it was terrible. And I'm never gonna do that again. But today I get to talk about my first Sony G Master lens, which is the Sony 50 millimeter F1.4 Mark II. So, what else can I say? It's a G Master lens. That's basically the whole video. So thank you very much. If you want to like the video, comment, and subscribe, you should do so. But, but this lens has been a long time coming in the sense of me wanting to get a G Master. I always knew the G Masters were kind of like, I don't want to say, I don't want to put it there, but maybe I want to say it's like the pinnacle of the lenses for Sony's, right? Like there is a three kind of tier system, maybe I would say for Sony lenses, which is your standard line. You have your G line, which is kind of in the middle. And then you have your G Masters, which is the, the top, the higher end lenses like this one. If you aren't too familiar with uh, G Master lenses, basically, if I can get this to focus like I usually do, um, you can notice the G letter and then there's a red background around it, a red color. That signifies that it's a G Master. G lenses is the same thing, but instead of the red, it's just black. It's just neutral black. So then anytime you see a lens and you see the red square or red color, you'll know, oh, okay, that's a G Master lens. But Yes, it's, it's been a long time coming again. I've been kind of looking at the different G Masters and I just saw this one and actually a photographer that um, did a photo shoot for my wife and I, um, he also got the Sony G Master 50 millimeter Mark II and he was also recommending for me to, to try it out. And I'll be honest with you, um, I, I never really liked the focal length of 50 millimeter in the beginning, perhaps when I first started and that's kind of when I had the 50 millimeter. When I first started doing photos three years ago, I just wasn't really good and maybe I just, wasn't used to how using a 50 millimeter was. I also had the Sony a6000 with the 30 millimeter. So I think roughly after the conversion is around 45. So it isn't necessarily 50, but it's pretty close. But I really fell in love with the Sigma 56 millimeter, which um, translated basically into an 85. And I also have an 85 Sony F1.8 that I use like 99% of the time for my portraits. I recently bought a used 50 millimeter um, so I kind of was using that and I started to warm up to it. And I guess that's kind of where it prompted me to be like, you know what, I'm gonna go for the 50 millimeter. I don't need another 85. I think the 85 1.8 is perfect and I love it. And I have a 35 Sigma F1.4, which I'm using right now. So I don't need to use that. So I figured, you know what, why not just go for the 50? It's a very nice standard focal length. And I jokingly told my friends that, you know what, I don't like the 50 millimeter focal length, but if I were to get a G Master, I'm sure I would change my mind and love it. And so maybe, maybe it's what's gonna happen once I have this and I use this and I, and I enjoy it a lot more. But I'll quickly talk about the lens because I haven't really, I've seen it like a bit because I opened it before and like I literally still have like the box and like the little wrapping paper that it came with. Um, but we'll, we'll quickly just dissect it, I guess you can say. Um, Pretty standard, it's got your aperture ring, so as we call it, clicky clicky. You can kind of hear it, hopefully. Um, and you can turn it off, yep, with the click on and off. Off just means the ring is smooth. Um, I probably would never use that because I've had some shoots in real estate where I accidentally switched the aperture ring on. I didn't really, real, I didn't really realize it. And then I was like, why is my aperture at like 16? Why can't I make it lower? And it's like, oh, it's because it, it clicked out. And so kind of things like that will happen. And I'm like, okay, shoot, I gotta be extra careful. Um, with that in mind as well, things I also won't use are these two custom buttons that I see. I just don't really put anything on custom buttons. I usually manage everything on my camera body. And again, I'm pretty sure there are ways that you can use it to make your life so much easier and so much more efficient, but maybe I'm just lazy. I mean, no, no, not even maybe, I am lazy. And so I don't really try to find 
anything to use for these buttons. Uh, there's an autofocus and manual focus toggle. Same thing, I'm not gonna touch that. Um, you can toggle it in between the two, but for me, I'm just gonna leave it on autofocus. And if I need to manual focus, I'll change it on my camera so I can manual focus there. And then other than that, that's about it. I mean, the filter thread, if I remember correctly, is 67, which is perfect. Most of my filters are in 67, so I don't have to buy new ones just specifically for this lens. I'm not a big person on using step-up rings. I personally like having filters for the specific filter size. Um, but of course, you know, if you uh, are a 67 and you have other lenses that are smaller, you can always step up um, and put step-up rings on your smaller lenses. Or if you have bigger focal lengths above 67, same thing, you can use your step-up rings to kind of make the filters fit on this lens as well. But that is the lens. I'm gonna be very careful here. Um, this little bougie bag, it comes in this little bougie bag I should mention as well. Little carrying bag. I mean, if you want extra protection for the lens itself, you put it in there, put it in your backpack or not. I know for myself, I'm just gonna put it in my backpack anyways, or it's gonna be on my camera almost 24 seven as I test it out a bit more. And it also comes with a lens hood. Um, this one seems pretty nice. Spin, a click. Okay, so there's no force that I needed to do, which a lot of other lenses uh, need. Um, but anyways, I know of anyways. And then it looks like you can click this button here and unlocks it, voila. So, done. I mean, <laughs> nice demonstration of the lens, but that's it. That's the video for today. Again, I just wanted to really quickly share this with you guys because I've been, it's been with me for a week and it was just, I'm just pointing over there, you can't see it, but my shelf was over there. It's just sitting in the corner of my shelf and I didn't want to open it because I was so tempted to just open it and use it for photos, but I wanted to film this video first and then I'm going to go out and film some video and take some photos. Um, I'm not too sure if I'm going to have B-roll after or before. So wherever the B-roll is or wherever the short film is or whatever I'm going to do, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys liked it and whatever samples I could find. But that is the video. This is the Sony 50 millimeter F1.4 Mark II. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a like. I would really like it. If you want to comment on the video and talk about this lens, I'm sure a lot of you may already have the lens or, or are thinking about getting the lens or talking about other things as well. Please just talk and comment below. I love replying. I love starting up conversations and getting to know you guys. And of course, if you guys want to subscribe to my channel for more content, I would really, really appreciate it. And I promise I'm going to post more videos. I hope. But thank you very much yet again for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.